Yo, 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 what's up, girl? <laughs> hey, you. <laughs> late. I'm going to call you late Joker. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? Are you comfortable? Yeah, I'm good. Do you, you. want to slide back a little? No, 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 no. I'm, I'm not that black. <laughs> so please explain. Who are you? What's your name? What do you do? Okay, my, my CV would be Rhonda Costa. Yeah. The one and only, second to none. The man of the hour, tower of power. <laughs> Too hot to handle, too cold to hold. <laughs> that, would, that would be my CV. That's your daddy. That, what? That, that's my CV. Nah, man. <laughs> no, I'm a behavior. I do behavior analysis. Yeah. And um, here in Denmark, it kind of started in Denmark because I'm known for American football. Yeah. You're and, a football uh, player. I uh, used to be, and I put not a uh, soccer player, but a football. Yeah, player. Yeah, American football. Yeah. So I guess I kind of put American football on the map in Denmark. Oh. I probably did the most for it. Uh, your national team coach and all that helped really? him to get to the U.S. and back, and so I'm pretty well known in that in that sector. Okay. But um, my expertise has always been. I've always had an issue with uh, social work and sports. Yeah. You know, like they talk about uh, how sports, what sports could do for youngsters and stuff like that, and it's all a bunch of BS. It, 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 sports can do a lot for youngsters, but the sports has to be designed for it, and that's what they don't understand. So you don't think that sports is actually as good as... It is, but it's misunderstood. Everything is... Uh, what you hear Danes talk about is uh, Danish tradition, Danish values, and stuff like that. And um, so you're a very close society. It's not that they're open to outsiders, and especially if you're an outsider with ideas, uh, it doesn't seem to sit too well. Which is fine by me. I mean, you know, it's 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 your country, so it's it's fine by me. You don't consider yourself being a Dane? Excuse me. <laughs> like you know, you shouldn't drink and drive, right? <laughs> <laughs> but you, how long have you lived in Denmark? <laughs> well, I came in, and uh, it's not that I find I'm myself as living here. I find myself more as working here. Yeah. Um, you need to imagine that I came and my first visit to Denmark, like was. I think at the end of the 80s, a friend of mine from the U.S. Air Force, he was here. And they needed an American football coach for Copenhagen. Yeah. And I was going to college. I was just going back to college. I was in Holland at the time. Imagine I've worked in 68 countries, right? 68, 68 different 68, countries. 68 different countries. Whether I lived there, worked there, or studied there. So uh, he's like, and I was going to Italy. So he's like, oh, no, man, you got to come on, man. Uh, you know, the whole story, blonde hair, blue eyed girls, and whatever have you. <laughs> And he knows, he knew how I was from that time. He knows I'm not into that. It doesn't say anything to me. The I'm girls. a very, yeah, I'm a very serious person. Because it's him, I said, okay, I mm. agree that, okay, I will, I will oh. come. So then I came and I started working, but during my study, I was doing different type. I was doing my thesis on sports and behavior. Mm -hmm. So I was very much into behavioral development. And um, I got an opportunity in uh, Brundu back in the 90s where I was doing a, an American football program. And this is where that whole success uh, developed. Yeah. And um, I think around that time, your, the hip hop and all this stuff started coming. But I had issues with how... This is like when hip hop was it, only exactly. was like a small... It, almost nothing. Yeah. Right? So um, from back then, I was laughing already because I could see that this pedagogy for this specific group uh, was not going to work. No. So there was this um, there was this this television documentary film that was going to be made and this guy contacted me his name is Henrik Messen from TV2. Yeah. So he got in touch with me and he wanted to do this thing about uh, sports and behavior and 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 uh, how those two go yeah, in. Yes, so in what they call social ballista the uh, area ballista. exactly and this was Brandy Strength at the time, yeah. right? So when he came to film it, he realized that what I was doing with the sports was totally different to what he expected. Yeah. And um, so he says, you know what? He says, uh, I think we need to make a program out of this. So I said, yeah, sure, do whatever. Yeah. So he makes this program. And then this program, I explained to him, I says, look, and the way things are developing right now in your pedagogical system, it, 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 your pedagogical system is designed for sheep. It's not designed for what wolves. What is the pedagogy? system try to explain it uh, pedagogy is all the work you do from the burning hill and the vulgar student with youngsters and yeah. children and stuff like that in schools and their development the pedagogical philosophy approach yeah this is a philosophy that is designed for sheep it's not designed for wolves 
right? So if kids are in line, then your pedagogical system will work. And overall, yes, your kids and everything in your society is a reflection of that. Mm. It works, right? Yeah. But there's a, a niche. There's a small group that I knew that it, and, they, and their day to day are the elephant in the room, mm. right? But the problem is the room didn't grow, the elephant grew, right? Mm. So now they broke out and now you get what I told him at that time. I says, you know, you're going to get... Uh, in a few years, you guys are going to have gangs and shootings in Denmark. So right? you kind of predicted this. Oh, yes. Then. I have it on film. Yeah. So he started laughing. So he tells me, again, see, this is Danish now. He goes, this is Denmark. This is not USA. So I was <laughs> like, oh, really? Okay, cool. So um, Copenhagen University invited me to speak at the international conference that they had there at the Institute for Idrat because it was yeah. sports and stuff that I was doing, right? So um, this professor, Reinhard Stelter, he invited me to speak at, the, I was one of their speakers. Then they had this main speaker who does ABA. He's an applied, a world-known applied behavior analysis a professor, um, Dr. Eitan Eldar yeah. from Israel. And he's the main speaker coming to Denmark. So he comes to Denmark and Professor Stelter tells him, Reinhardt tells him, I have a guy, I think you need to hear what he has to say when it comes to sports and stuff like that and behavior. The same night, he looks at me and he goes, uh, I have to talk to you. Again, see, this is Denmark now. You're right here in Denmark. I'm as good as I... No, I'm not good. I am the best. Mm. Okay? And they, uh, you know, you all have oh, this. You kind of went into a Danish thing. Yeah, I'm you guys have this. Yendalone. Yendalone, exactly. <laughs> there you go. You got this Yendalone you thing. You can't get away from it. So I'm, I'm like laughing, right? So I, no, no, I don't, I don't want to get away from it either. I want to stomp on it, right? Yendalone. So, yeah, yeah, I want to stomp all over it. Uh, this is 97 by 1999. Now I'm in Besançon, France, speaking at the World Congress now. But when I returned from China, what happened was, besides the NFL thing, I, my aunt told me, she said, um, you, uh, you have, a, I have, a, I have a, a message here for you from TV2. This is in 2000 and, this is in 2009. And he goes, well, you know, he says, uh, we wanted to talk to you because of this documentary film. Seemingly at this time, you, you predicted that in Denmark we were going to get gangs. Indeed. We found it interesting because uh, all of your predictions came through. You said guns were going to come into Denmark, we were going to get gangs, and you were going to get shootings. I says, yep, that's what I said. Um, okay, <laughs> fine. You're correct. I'm contacted now by Natasha Kroner. Yeah. So she, uh, so I says, do you, did Jesper tell you that I'm in New York? So she go, yeah, 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 but we have a studio in New York. We'd like you to go down to the studio and then we'll interview you live in New York and yeah. directly from New York. So how long have you lived in Denmark? I came back in again in 2010. And so you've lived here for nine years. Are you uh, married? Just uh, who? Are you married? Do I do I look drunk to you? <laughs> do you have kids? That you... Uh, no, I don't have kids. Even the ones I don't know about. <laughs> I don't have none. <laughs> how don't... old are you, man? No, I, I never discussed that. Why? I never disclosed that. Why? Because uh, if when I tell people I have to show them ID, they don't believe me anyway. Name two good things in Denmark. Two good things in Denmark. Um, Kanel Gifla. <laughs> yeah. No doubt about that. Hands down, Kanel Gifla. <laughs> it's real funny. Danes are bad to become friends with, but when you get some Danish friends, they're very good. Yeah. To but you work with these groups of youngsters yeah right yeah and how do you feel like do you see there is a progress like are they progressing is it getting worse is it getting this is what i see i see that i'm doing outstanding work i think i'm ranking as number one you could go to christiania ask a christian neat you could ask a ltf guy you could ask a bandidos a hell's angels a Satudara. you could ask any group they'll tell you okay so you're the, really close. To very the, close. Okay. They will tell you this guy is on to something. The only thing is here comes your Yandalone now. Right? And uh, what I find here, people feel threatened. Their position feels threatened because they've been doing it wrong for so long. They, they, they have a fear of admitting that they, that they were wrong. Yeah. Okay. They have a fear of that. 
you have no, let, let's get it clear, you have no experts in this country, okay? 15 years of gang banging. Gang banging in the United States is hundreds of years, okay? And we haven't figured it out. So it's gang banging is still going on. Mm -hmm. So how do you have, uh, where do these Danish gang experts come from? 15 years. But Ron, the problem is in Denmark is the fact that everybody comes out and they claim to be experts and everything. They it's know. not just the criminals or the crooks that they're, it's like in Islam, it's about Muslims, it's Syria, it's the US. You, everybody just goes out and they're like, Become oh, an expert. I'm an expert yeah. 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 in, yeah. you know, hats. So now everybody that want to talk about hats, they're going to call Ron because Ron, he portrays himself as an expert. Exactly. Even though he's just going like, the same way. The problem with experts shit. is that they don't listen anymore. No. Everybody listens to them now. Yeah. So they stop listening. You talk about uh, Mulna Park and uh, Blue Guts Platz and all these places. Me, I start laughing. I'm like, what? What are you talking about? If you want, if you want c criminals, then you got to go to Heller up Ghent after, mm. and you got to go up north, right? Because officially, how could you get rich in this country? Yeah. Okay, you they got to come on now, man. You you you, you can't be that naive. I have uh, I have more problems and issues with uh, the people that call themselves professionals um, working the system than I do with if you let's call them the bad guys, the yeah. criminals. I have more problems with uh, with them. Um, all these projects and programs that you have here, it's a waste of time. It's entertainment. So what do you what do you suggest they should do? So what you have to do is the pedagogical system has to adopt, adapt themselves to mm. the reality. This is what's missing here. They have no special operations training in this country to deal with the, spe the special group. Mm. There's nobody to deal with it, none. Are you Muslim? I guess I lived like that. When I was in the Middle East, that's what they thought. Because I don't, uh, I don't uh, drink. Because I never, never tasted alcohol in my life, so I what? have no notion. Never. Never tried to smoke a cigarette. I have no, absolutely no notion. Like I said, I've always been very serious. Why? I'm very. This is my, this is my bad side. My seriousness is my bad side. I don't do jokes. My father, what? my you father. Don't do jokes? No, my father always You're says. You're in the wrong cap, man. My father always said, in every joke, there's a little bit of truth. And I, and I use jokes that way. Comedians do the same thing. Yeah. You guys use jokes to tell us a, a real story, yeah. but you just break it down. And this is how I see it. And this is why I still believe I'm like a very serious person. Do the boys make you laugh though? Oh, them niggas crack me up. Seriously? Okay. Oh yeah, they crack me up with some of the shit they come out with. Huh? Do you consider yourself being a thug? I'm a, I'm, I'm a professor thug. Mm. I'm the academic thug. Yeah. Because I could sit down with any one of their professors and I asked, I said, let me ask you a couple of questions and see if you could answer these questions. No, you can't. Okay. I was talking to you about this Nadim Yasser guy, right? When I was going to talk to him, this is what I wanted to explain to him. Dude, you need to back off from your book. I was going to warn him. You need to back off from your book. I didn't even know the guy. No. I only heard the, 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 and the reason why he had to back off of his book is because a mathematical calculation in the gang environment is a mathematical calculation. And even the gang members in Denmark, I don't care what gang you belong to, how long you've been there, I'm ahead of the game. And I know that mathematical calculation which they themselves don't even, not even aware of. And I was going to explain this to this guy. Number one, he was 24 when he was banging. He mm. came out when he was 31, mm. right? So let's say he's banging seven years, mm. right? Okay. Now, when you were 24 and you were banging, that means I could easily subtract seven years and you have guys who are 17 who are under you, mm. right? And now we're skipping over the rules of giving guns to people who can't get arrested mm. and stuff like that. So let's, so we just take off the seven years, right? So I take off seven years, so I go back to you. So you're dealing with 17 year olds who you're controlling and you're banging, right? Yeah. And uh, you might be in a, you might have a, a issue with one of these guys who are 17 or a group because he had belonged to the bandidos group. That yeah. was, the gorilla was under the bandidos at the time, right? Okay, so you banging. Seven years later, you wake up yeah. and you go, 
I'm out of this. Okay, yeah. it's a process that not seven years later, but over time, you go, you know, I'm out of this, right? Yeah. So you wake up. Okay, so you're 31 now, you wake up. Now, Raju Su of Two Fear, Fear Two Su, yeah. they got you and they're telling you a bunch of crap. They make you the front figure of their campaign, mm -hmm. right? It's, it ain't your campaign, it's their campaign. Don't get it wrong. Okay, you better, you better, you better watch where you live and uh, and recognize mm -hmm. what you're getting yourself into, bro. Okay, you are, you are, your face become a front figure for their campaign. Yeah. Okay, and I'm like, do you understand that you're being used? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, because he's one of them. So of course, if he's talking, they will listen. Yeah. <laughs> really? Okay, good, good for you that you believe that. Okay, so now uh, he writes a book, thirty one. Really? Now, let me explain this to you, Nadim. May the dead rest in peace. 17, you 31. That's 17, he's now 24. Yeah. Okay? If you say you're out of the game, right? Then you should be off the air. You should be off of everything. You should be off the grid totally, mm. right? If you went to a date, with a guy or a girl, I don't care who you go on a date with. If yeah. you go on a date and they're talking about their ex the whole time. Oh, right? man. You're thinking he or she is not over that ex. Yeah. I'm done with you too. I ain't going on no date with you no more. You're still busy with your ex. Yeah. This is the same thing. It's the same. So he talking about his ex. He's saying, yeah. I yeah. used to be a gang member. But Nobody. Now I'm not. You're still in it. Yeah. If you're on the radio talking and talking about gangs yeah. and writing a book, guess what? You're still in the game. Why do you have a towel with you? Always. Always have a towel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Always. Why? Everybody always asks me. That keeps me out of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously? Always. 24-7. Always. Had the same one? This, no. I, wash, I got uh, about <laughs> three of them. I wash. When they're in the wash, they just rotate. And that's your thing. That's my thing. My towel is always with me. You cannot find me in no church. You cannot find me at no event. Without uh, a towel. Even if it's a black tie event, my <laughs> towel, if it's down in my drawers, to make my dick look big, I have it down in my, I have it down in my drawers. This is, uh, people go, ah, you don't have your towel with you today. <laughs> They'll be like, damn, when I'm gonna catch you. <laughs> Girl, I'll see you later. Mwah. Okay. It was a pleasure. Absolutely. We'll talk. We will definitely talk. Okay. It was a pleasure, Ron. Good, good, good. I can't wait to read your book. Oh, that's, you could get in line. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you soon. Unstoppable. We'll talk. We'll talk. Nice meeting you, Ron. Absolutely. Likewise. Bye-bye. Okay, hey, listen to us, leave one of the